everyone welcome back to my channel and today i am going to discuss two important thermodynamic terms thermodynamic equilibrium and thermodynamic processes so let us start with thermodynamic equilibrium a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium if its macroscopic properties in different phases or in its different parts does not undergo any change with time then the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium suppose we have a heterogeneous system comprised of three different phases and if its temperature is fixed at p its volume is fixed at v temperature is t and composition n and if there is no change in these macroscopic properties with time then the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium okay so next is the criteria for thermodynamic equilibrium so for a system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium it has to attain three different types of equilibria number 1 is thermal equilibrium then mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium so let us discuss these equilibrium in one by one so first thermal equilibrium a system is said to be in thermal equilibrium if no heat flows from one part of the system to the other part okay and this means for this type of equilibrium the temperature should remain constant throughout the system or temperature should be same in all phases or in all parts of the system for example here we have three phases and if there is temperature difference one phase is at higher temperature and another is at lower temperature then there will be flow of heat because we know the heat flows from higher temperature to low temperature okay so in order to attain this thermal equilibrium that is there should be no heat flow from one part of the system to another part temperature has to be constant throughout the system so this is thermal equilibrium second type of equilibrium is mechanical equilibrium a system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium if no work or no mechanical work is done by the one part of the system on the other part of the system and there is no movement of matter within system or between the system and surroundings so let us explain it in a way so let us discuss what is mechanical work for example i have a gas enclosed inside a container and this container is also fitted with a frictionless piston okay and gas is inside the container then this gas will have certain pressure which we we will call it as internal pressure of the gas and pressure is also acting from the outside that is external pressure and this external pressure is exerted by the piston and the atmosphere so we have two types of pressure that is internal pressure of the gas and the external pressure okay now suppose that if the internal pressure of the gas is more than the external pressure then what will happen then the gas will expand and the work will be done and if the external pressure is more than the internal pressure of the gas then the gas will be compressed and again the work will be done but in the first case work will be done by the gas and in the second case work will be done on the gas okay so this work is done when there is pressure difference okay and if the external pressure and the internal pressure of the gas are equal then there will be no expansion because or no work done because the external and internal pressure they are same 
Understanding? So this means if the pressure remains constant, if the pressure remains constant in all the phases of the system, then there will be no work done by the one part of the system on the other part. Okay. So for mechanical equilibrium, pressure should remain constant. And if pressure does not remain constant, then there will be the flow of matter throughout the system and between the system and surrounding. Let us explain it with an example. We all are familiar with carbonated drink. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Limca, they all are carbonated drinks. And in these drinks, carbon dioxide is dissolved at a very high pressure. And we know that in these drinks, we have two phases, gas, gaseous phase and the liquid phase. And there is a pressure difference because gas is at a very high pressure and when we open the bottle then the gas moves upward because of high pressure and so there is expansion that work will be done and there will be the movement of matter because the gas is moving through the liquid and the some liquid or some matter will also come out of the bottle. This means that when there is pressure difference, there will be the movement of matter throughout the system as well as between the system and the surroundings. Understood? So this means that if the pressure will be constant, then there will be no movement of matter throughout the system and between the system and the surrounding. So I hope that you, have, you might have understood what is mechanical equilibrium. Our next topic is chemical equilibrium. A system is said to be in chemical equilibrium if its composition remains same throughout. I have explained composition in my previous video. For example, after attainment of, after attainment of equilibrium, we have animal, N1 moles in this phase and 2 moles in this phase and N3 moles in this phase and after attainment of equilibrium there should not be any change in the number, mo number of moles in different phases. They should remain constant. So this is what I mean by that composition should remain constant then the system is said to be in chemical equilibrium. So these were the three types of equilibria which a system must attain in order to be in thermodynamic equilibrium that is in first case temperature should remain constant in the second case pressure should remain constant and in the third case composition should remain constant okay so now discuss now we will discuss thermodynamic processes so first of all we will discuss that what is a process a process is said to be occurred if a system changes from one state to another okay that is from initial state to final state and I have explained that what is state of a system a state of a system is defined by its state variables okay and if it's a system changes or from A to B then its macroscopic properties changes here if I have pressure P1 V1 and temperature T1 then here I will have different values like P2, V2 and T2. Okay. So, we have these five types of different thermodynamic processes. So, first process is isothermal process. Okay. A process is said to be isothermal if the temperature remains constant throughout the process. But here I want to say that temperature has to be kept constant. We have to keep the temperature constant. And in this process, heat will be exchanged between the system and surrounding because sometimes it comes in our mind that temperature is constant, 
that no heat will be given out uh, by the system or no heat will enter into the system this is not the case because to maintain the constant temperature exchange of heat is very much required between the system and surrounding and let us explain it uh, with the example of working of thermostat and what is thermostat thermostat is an instrument which is used to maintain constant temperature so i am taking the example of water thermostat and how the water thermostat works water thermostat is like this here we have in this area so we have water okay and it has inbuilt heater it has inbuilt heater it has a knob it has a knob to set the temperature and it has also sensors okay now i have plugged in the thermostat in the electric socket and i have set the knob of thermostat at 35 degree celsius that the temperature which i want to maintain is 35 degree celsius okay and when the knob is set at 35 degree celsius the heater will automatically turned on and the temperature of the water will start increasing and when the temperature of water will reach at 35 degree celsius the sensor in this thermostat will sense this temperature and the heater will be automatically turned off okay now the temperature of this water is maintained at 35 degree celsius now suppose the temperature of the surrounding is 25 degree celsius temperature of the surrounding is 25 degree celsius surroundings are at low temperature and i have explained that heat always flows from higher temperature to lower temperature so what this water of the thermostat it is at higher temperature and it will start losing heat to the surrounding and the temperature will start decreasing okay suppose the temperature has decreased to 34.999 degree celsius then the sensors sensors in this thermostat again sense the temperature and the heater will be automatically turned on and when the temperature again will be equal to 35 degree celsius the heater will be turned off okay so here i have explained that to maintain this 35 degree temp uh, degree celsius temperature heat will be exchanged between the system and the surrounding and i have to or we have to supply heat in order to maintain this temperature okay so in isothermal process heat is exchanged between system and surroundings so our next process is adiabatic process if a process is carried out in such a manner that there is no flow of heat between the system and surrounding and vice versa then the process is called as adiabatic process this means that we have to carry out that process inside an insulated vessel so that there is no exchange of heat what when there is no exchange of heat between system and surrounding it doesn't mean that temperature is not changing you might have seen that when we uh, store or when we place some hot liquid like hot milk or hot water in thermos flask no doubt that thermos flask keeps that liquid hot for a longer time but uh, after some time maybe after 8 or 9 hours you will see that temperature has decreased because we know that the hot liquid has in hot liquid molecules have higher kinetic energy and those molecules when they collide with the wall of the flask or with one another they lose their kinetic energy okay it takes time but they lose their kinetic energy and we know that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature and if the kinetic energy of the molecule falls then the temperature will decrease no doubt no doubt it will take time but temperature will decrease so when no heat leaves the system or enters the system then the process is adiabatic process or heat is constant heat is remaining constant 
and our next process is isobaric process okay when in any process pressure is kept constant throughout then that process is called as isobaric process suppose i have converted a into b and during this process the temperature is kept constant mean to say initial initial at initial position pressure was p and at final position pressure is again equal to p this means that there is no change in pressure that is this dp is equal to p minus p equal to 0 that is no there is no change in pressure and majority of the processes which are studied open to atmosphere for example i have a container and some chemical reaction is going on here okay and this container is open to atmosphere then pressure is automatically constant equal to the value of atmos atmospheric pressure so all the chemical reactions or the processes which are studied open to atmosphere they are occurring at constant pressure okay so next process is your isochoric process if in a process volume is kept constant that is there is no change in volume that we are going from a to b but the volume will remain same okay the vessel in which this reaction is taking place there will be no change in the volume of of if we have a gas there will be no expansion or contraction I mean to say there will be no change in volume the volume will remain constant this means that dv that is small change in volume will be equal to zero so then that process is called as your isochoric process our last process is cyclic process okay a cycle in cyclic process the system returns to its original state for example in cyclic process if this is the initial position then a system will go from this place yeah, or this state to another state and from this state it will again return to the same position okay so we have reached the place from where we have started this means that in this case initial state and the final state is same okay so if u is the internal energy u is the internal energy of the system here and this is the initial internal energy now the system has returned to this stage the initial energy is equal to u and the final internal energy is also equal to u because the same state has been reached again so what is the change in internal energy the change in internal energy du will be equal to zero that is u minus u equal to zero okay so this is a cyclic process so these are the five different types of processes which we will study uh, during the course of this uh, chapter okay so i have explained thermodynamic equilibrium and various thermodynamic processes if you have any doubt then you can or any question you can leave that question in the comment box also uh, and you can also contact me uh, on my whatsapp group and telegram group okay so thank you very much and in my next video i am going to discuss reversible and irreversible processes and uh, some more terms like internal energy and the modes of exchange of energy between system and surroundings so if you enjoyed my lecture if you have learned what i have taught you today so please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon Thank you very much.